Hey, welcome back to my channel, His Love, Her Home. If it's your first time here, my name is Frances, and I'm a stay-at-home homeschooling mom of four boys. I am presently schooling fourth, seventh, and eighth grade. Today, I'm going to share with you what my seventh and eighth graders are doing this year for homeschool. Let's jump right into it so I don't waste your time. Let's go. So first things first, my sons are reading the story of the world. Um, I will do a separate video on how they're using the story of the world, what we're adding to it. You will see one of those things today. And um, yeah, how we're going to read all four of these books today. I can say we are in a chapter six. For me, I'm liking it. I hope they're liking it. We'll see. <laughs> I know Caleb, my seventh grader, he um, is already through what he's supposed to do. He's a very fast reader. Um, so, yeah, he just reads ahead of everybody. But it's going good. We're liking this. Um, the next thing I'll show you is their vocabulary. This is Word Root. This is an add-on for the year. This is their history timeline. Sorry about the spots. You know when kids work in Greece? Yeah. So <laughs> they're filling this out gradually. I told them this is something I got because I really want them to have like a cool timeline. Oh no, I'm ripping it. But basically this is the one we did already. And like, as we learn a little stuff, I will make them basically what they learn in the story of the world, they will timeline inside their history timeline. And this timeline is from School Nest. Anything that I do show you today, I will try to link their websites below so you can check it out if you like. So the next thing I'm going to show you is Matthew C for my 7th and 8th grader. My 8th grader is in pre-algebra and my 7th grader is in Epsilon. As you know, Matthew C is a mastery program. So with my 7th grader, I'm trying to do this one and the next one. So he is ready to go straight into pre-algebra next year. If not, if he moves faster than that, whoa, we'll go further than that. Um, they don't really have a lot. I can say cursive, um, they're not doing this year. And what you won't see on this video, which they are doing in their homeschool group, um, they're doing current events and spontaneous, basically speaking. Um, it's like a public speaking class, but with current events mixed in. And then they're also taking literature with their first literature. They are reading Macbeth and sorry about the horn they're also taking chemistry and basically this class covers chemistry but it kind of changes every couple of weeks right now they're doing chemistry matter atoms stuff like that it's basically a class so that they have success in high school science so it covers all of the categories of science which is something that i loved the last thing that they have is art so I don't have to cover any art this year for any of my kids unless we have a fun art day. So that is something I was like, that's good. I like that, even though I still do like to do art with them. So you will not see any of those subjects here. And if I don't remember myself saying it, cursive is kind of going to be incorporated with their spelling and vocabulary. If I want them to practice or learn, they will just practice it when they're doing or writing out words or sentences or stuff like that, which leads me to fix it grammar. Um, this is their grammar and it goes with their writing through IEW. Um, this is fix it grammar. This is an example relating to cursive. If you wanted your child to practice cursive when they have to go in here, um, and fix all the grammar things instead of writing it in print, they could do it in cursive or do both. So I think that's another way to help incorporate cursive if you want your older kids to still practice cursive. So that is something that I will be doing with fix it grammar. We have already completed week one of this. It seems very doable and easy for them, which I'm like, mm, I don't know whether I want it to be easy, but I do notice that it does get a little bit harder or more things to do towards the end of the book. So, um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, together they are doing style and structure. Um, this comes with video, so I do not have to teach them. They sit down together and they do this together as if they were in a class. They retell their stories together. If you're not familiar with IEW, they have to retell 
off of their keyword outline that they made. I am liking this. I'm really liking it so far. So we'll see how it goes. I actually like this better than the theme um, books. And we will see how our year goes with it. So fingers crossed. They also read in the first book, uh, first suggested book is um, The 21 Balloons. And this is by William Penn Du Bois. They're also reading that. So that's their writing. Last thing, this is other things that we do on our own. Basically, we would go from geography um, to our character study to a human body study. And then last, we were going to do Shakespeare, but because they're reading Shakespeare and actually doing it in literature um, for our last block of the year, I'm just going to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens um so yeah this is for geography for their reading journal and spelling um i can go over it again real quick if you saw it in my fourth graders video you've already seen this so this is what it looks like when they are finished there should be looking way better than my fourth graders they also have to label like three things on their map the flag the bird the flower and then put other things on here as you see in this one this one is to be filled up too as well so um he has a little bit more work to do on that and i get the flag and the bird and the flower from another sheet of paper and i will kind of show you that give me a second let me pull one out this is from the craftyclassroom.com um so basically they take this and cut this out cut this out and cut this out and they put it onto the other sheet of paper so they don't have to spend their time drawing and you know only one of my sons really likes to draw so i don't want to have to overdo it i am thinking about adding in a eating around the usa book so every week we can cook together maybe on a friday evening something from that state i am really thinking about doing that because all my kids like to cook, so why not do it, right? The next thing that they have in there is a, um, they have a fiction and a nonfiction reading journal. If you have not heard of Not Consume Ministries, I really like her stuff. Um, we did a Bible study from them last year, and this is just a journal book, a reading journal. This is the fiction reading journal. There's also nonfiction, so when you pay for this, you get a fiction and a nonfiction journal. Um, this is something that I will incorporate throughout the year um a little on a little off we'll do some and stop and then do some more because the journal is not that big to where you need to do it for the entire 36 weeks of the school year which is good because you can kind of rotate stuff and keep learning fresh and not doing the same thing all the time so this is one of the pages day two day three um it has character um when you're working on the introduction the list of characters main characters minor characters this is something that actually might really work great on um macbeth the last thing is their spelling words and this is something that i will incorporate on one of our fun days we will like work with our spelling words and go over them something just to have extra spelling work both of them are um pretty good at spelling so i'm not pushing it because they do have a lot of vocabulary this year. Um, in their curriculums, they have vocabulary with their literature that they're gonna be getting from the homeschool group. They have vocabulary in IEW, and then we have the Word Roots book for vocabulary. So even in all of that, I kinda make sure and pull out stuff and make sure they know how to spell, make sure they know what the word means. So yeah, it's all over our curriculum this year, so we might use this periodically when there's not something or it's, you know, a little light i might stick it in there they have a blank geography map as well if you already saw this was my fourth grader um as the year goes along this is not more so for them to learn the continents and the oceans because they already know that but <laughs> after we finish our study of the 50 states they're gonna more so go into rivers and um, deserts and stuff like that and mountains and we're gonna kind of like label those things on this map so they kind of know where they're at and a little bit about them um, we also are doing in a, a a unit study on australia this year which i'm very happy about their um uncle 
is from Australia. It's just something fun that I wanted to throw in for us because we have somebody related to us that's from Australia. So why not learn about Australia? A good friend of mine actually just went to Australia and it is beautiful so beautiful our goal as a family though is to get to africa we definitely want to go to africa and everybody i talk to somebody they're like go like it might be expensive save up and go so africa is definitely on our bucket list as a family so that is all i have for you guys today if you didn't know already i became part of a review crew and um yeah i'm excited to show you guys along the way um how we use this stuff that we review in our school in our home school whether we liked it or not, you know, everybody always wants to know that. So thank you for coming along with me. Guys, if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button, like, and ding that bell so you don't miss any more. I will check you guys out next time. Bye.